Welcome to My Savior Lives Northland. This program offers you the opportunity to participate in a service of worship led by local pastors and members of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. MSL Northland is locally produced with a message for the world. Psalm 121 tells us, I lift my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Hello, my friends. Welcome to this week's episode of My Savior Lives Northland. Where do you put your trust? There's a lot of places for us to place our trust, to go looking for comfort. But at the end of the day, you and I, we get to place our trust in the Lord our God. So let's place our trust in Him this day and see what He has to say to us in this week's episode of My Savior Lives Northland. I'm Pastor Matt Cole from Our Redeemer Lutheran Church in Cloquet, Minnesota, speaking to you from Hope Lutheran Church in Munger, Minnesota. I can't wait to see you after the song. Christ the Lord, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought, I'm storm, what heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease, my comfort, my all in all, here in the love of Christ, I stand in Christ alone. Took on flesh, fullness of God and helpless and babe. This gift of love, I'm 
calls me home here in the power of Christ I'll Let us begin in the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us turn to the Lord our God as we confess our sins. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, let us confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And so, brothers and sisters in Christ, I have great and wonderful news for you this day. The Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake he forgives you of all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you of all your sins. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Let us hear from the Lord our God. Our Old Testament lesson for today is found according to Genesis chapter 15. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Fear not, Abram, I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless. And the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, you have given me no offspring, and a member of my household will be my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. Your very own son shall be your heir. And he brought him outside and said, Look towards heaven and number the stars. If you are able to number them, then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. And he believed the Lord, and he counted it to him as righteousness. Our epistle reading for today is found according to Hebrews chapter 11. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it the people of old received their condemnation. By faith... We understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteous. God commending him by accepting his gifts, and through his faith, though he died, he still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death, and he was not found because God had taken him. Now before he was taken, he was commended as having pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please him, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. By faith, Noah being warned by God concerning 
events as yet unseen in reverent fear constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this, he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he went to live in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents and with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. By faith, Sarah herself received power to conceive, even when she was past the age, since she considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man and him as good as dead were born descendants, as many as the stars of heaven and as many as the immeasurable grains of sand by the seashore. These all died in faith, not having received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar, and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. For people who speak thus make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of that land from which they had gone out, they would have had the opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel for today is found according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. And he said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body, what you will put on. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor reap, they have neither storehouse nor barn, yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, being anxious, can add a single hour to his life span? If then you are not able to do as small a thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass, which is alive in the field today, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor be worried, for all the nations of the world seek after these things. And your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom, and these things will be added to you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the needy. Provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old, with a treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you then to please join me in affirming our faith in the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as we speak the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Grace, mercy, and peace to you in the name of our Lord and risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A wise friend of mine once told me that that which we are most afraid of losing is that which becomes our idol. Now think about that for a moment. That which we are most afraid of losing is that which becomes our idol. The point is that most of us don't sin and make the mistakes that we make in life because we are sadistic and power hungry uh, and, that we're, and because we're some sort of aspiring dictator. No, our sins, our mistakes come out of a fear of losing the things that we love most. Perhaps losing our possessions, or perhaps losing our careers, or having something impact our careers that we don't want to have impact. Perhaps we're afraid of something damaging our reputation, or doing damage to our families, or spinning our lives out of any sense of control that we may think that we have over our lives. After all, the first commandment is to have no other gods. So what does this mean? Well, what does Martin Luther say in the small catechism? His definition of this that many of us grew up learning in confirmation class was, you should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. You should fear, love, and trust in God above all all things. Do you? Do I? How well do we trust in God? How easy is it for us to do that? What are the things that take our trust off of God? You can't break any of the Ten Commandments without breaking the first. And so when we look at Abraham and his wife, Sarah, we begin knowing them as Abram and Sarai as early as Genesis chapter 13. Now by faith, Abram has followed God into the land of Canaan. He has uprooted his life. He has taken everything he has and he has gone to live in another land, trusting that God would prosper him there. But when Abram saw that Pharaoh lusted after his wife in Genesis chapter 13, 
he, what did he do? Do you know what he did? He actually passed his wife Sarai off to Pharaoh as his sister. He said, oh no, you can go ahead and marry my sister. Because he didn't trust God to protect him, to protect his family. And so he said, oh yeah, just go marry my sister, which was actually his wife. That's sick, right? It's kind of gross when we think about it. Abram valued his life and his possessions so much that he failed to put his trust in God to take care of the situation and instead passed off his wife as being nothing more than his sister. Later, after our Old Testament lesson for today was, uh, was recorded, so today being Genesis 15 is God, we just heard God made a promise, I will make your descendants more numerous than the stars, is Abram was really struggling. He was struggling in his relationship with God. He said, I'm doing everything you're asking me to do, but I don't even have a son. Abram longed for the offspring of God, for the to be more numerous than the stars, to come from his line. He longed for that so much that Sarai, his wife, being old herself, Sarah, as she would later be known, convinced Abraham to have a child with her servant girl, again failing to place their trust in God to fulfill his promises. He had sex with another woman to try to bring about God's promises on his own time. Again, it's pretty despicable, right? Pretty gross. God, though, would eventually bring Abram to more fully trust in his promises. As Abraham would eventually have that promised son. And what would Abraham do when God asked him to take Isaac up the mountain and to sacrifice him? Do you know what he did? He obliged. In fact, when Isaac said, Dad, where's the sacrifice? He said, you know what? God's going to provide it. And do you know what God did? Seeing how much Abraham trusted in God, this, this person who was willing to pass off his wife to someone else to protect his own safety, now he was willing to sacrifice his own son, give him over to the Lord. And so what did God do? He said, stop, stop, don't sacrifice your son, for I know that you are faithful. And he gave him a perfect ram without any blemish that was caught in the thicket. And he allowed Abraham to sacrifice that ram as Isaac's substitute. And Abraham's trust in God would be such that, that God would continue to provide multitudes of generations who would come after Isaac. And so, this would ultimately culminate in Jesus being the ultimate sacrificial lamb, the one who Isaac's substitution points to. And so Jesus would come, and it would be this very Jesus who would come and speak to us today in our gospel lesson, instructing us not to be consumed by, by our anxieties, but to instead place our trust in God and in Him only. And ultimately, to trust that He is the one who redeems us and makes us His. Jesus reminds us, what do we have to fear in life? We have a God who sees to our every need. He sees to our every anxiety. He sees to our every care. Our God reigns over all things. And his kingdom continues to come, even in your life and mine, doesn't it? As we place our trust in the salvation which has come to us through the cross of Jesus. 
the cross of Jesus, where the Son of God himself died. Died in your place and mine as our perfect substitute. We should never forget the promises that God makes to us in Romans chapter 8. No, in all these things, we are much more than conquerors through him who has loved us. You have a God who has created you, brothers and sisters. You have a God in Christ Jesus who has died for you and who has raised himself up to proclaim resurrection life forever with him. You have a God who has claimed you through the promises of baptism. You have a God who has come to you through his word and he has said, you are mine, come and follow me, come and live in my ways and you will live forever. You have a God who comes to you through the flesh and blood that is present in the bread and wine of Holy Communion. And he wraps his arms around you and he says, I've got you. You are in my care. Your God is the one who brings you to faith through the power of his Holy Spirit, who promises to you today, salvation belongs to you forever. But the word of God is also clear. As the world says to you and me time and time again, place your trust in me. The word of God says, place your trust in Jesus. Place your trust in the God who has created you and saved you, who's called you into faith, into a special life-giving relationship with you. Follow him. Place your trust in him and never doubt for one moment that he is enough. And so let us place our trust in God as we come to him in prayer this day. In the name of Jesus, we bow our heads. Dear God, thank you for the life and salvation that you have have given me through your son, Jesus Christ. Please guide my life to be a legacy which trusts in your promises always. Please help me to place my trust in you as the world around us tries to convince me to place my trust someplace else, anywhere else. God, help me to know that I can place my trust in you always. May my trust remain in you today and forever. By the grace of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Now may the peace of Almighty God, the peace that surpasses all understanding, guard and keep your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord Jesus Christ, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now, my friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace now and forever. Amen. God be with you, my friends. May your trust be in him who takes care of you always. I know that he'll keep you this this day. God bless, my friends. Thank you for joining us in worship today. If you would like more information about a church in your area, or if this program has been a blessing to you, please send comments and contributions to MSL Northland CO Mount Olive Lutheran Church, 2012 East Superior Street, Duluth, Minnesota, 55812. We appreciate your support and prayers for this ministry. My Savior Lives Northland is a production of Stokes Media House in conjunction with the Wisconsin and Minnesota North Districts of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod and supported by viewers like you.